oh, okay, so now it just says I'm alive like that, just like that, boom. So let's do one of these, put that up there real quick. And maybe it is going live to YouTube. I hope not because I wasn't ready at all, but let's see if I can get caught up. We'll see what happens uh, real quickly here. Let's put up a quick camera or two, get them preloading if possible. Nothing like technical difficulties. If you're watching, I've been having them all morning. It's hilarious. So these things happen, it's no big deal. Oh no, <laughs> always a big deal. Broadcast will be starting here in a second. So log in, it's Rob Appel making it fun, Michael Miller Fabrics. And let's see what else we can do. Let's see if I can get some of these other cameras to run for us. See what we got going on. I had it all set up, dialed in perfect, I tell you what. But these things happen. These things happen. Hopefully you're hearing me out there. Let's see. So we can switch. Hey, there we go. Okay, I'm live. I have no idea if you're live with me. So now I'm looking at all this technology. How crazy is this? Let me get something running. Okay, here we go. Grab my cell phone. And I'm going to uh, bounce to YouTube and see if I'm on. <laughs> how funny is this? Well, we're testing today. I wanted to show you my studio. I wanted to show you what I was working on. Um, look at my audio levels, that kind of stuff a little bit more. And, um, oh, it looks like I am live. Fantastic. Here we go. Radical. And there's 21 of you already on there. Oh, I love you all so much. Okay. So now that I know you're here, um, I'm going to turn my volume down on this device and I can read your comments. Fabulous. Okay. I'm going to show you how to make this awesome ironing board cover uh, here in a moment. Um, I got a couple cameras to switch around and stuff. I'm just getting set up. I was literally ready to go 15 minutes early, but Facebook shut down or whatever. I don't really know what's going on. Um, okay, so now you're looking at my messy office chair, which is part of the studio remodel, but we're gonna get back to that. I want you to look right up my nose. Here we go. <laughs> and the cool thing about these is now I've got my Zoom cams and all of this. Hello, everybody. Awesome to have you here. And um, I'm going to still keep goofing off with technology just for a few more minutes while you all are logging in, please. Um, I got a couple extra cameras I want to get started in case any of this works out for my benefit. Um, maybe we can make a neat tutorial out of this ironing board I'm, I built. Well, I didn't build these. Years ago, somebody built these for me and they're fantastic and I love them and I'm going to walk you through them here in a second. That's a full four foot by two foot ironing board. That is, hey, I'm back. Here we go. Um, okay, we got main cam. Okay, so here we are, and I just want to say welcome, welcome, and I love all of you. Thank you for being here, and I am playing with setting up my own studio in California so that I can do all of this on the fly out of my home. I love the live videos. I love the conversations because I can see all of you down here. Um, so, but for the last four years, I've been so blessed to work with Missouri Star Quilt Company doing man sewing and they had a full audio visual crew that was excellent and they did all the hard work. And so I'm learning this, but I also believe we should always have something that is our form of art that we should be learning. So I am a professional quilt maker. So this year I am learning to be also a cinematographer uh, videographer kind of thing and I'm having so much fun with it so I've been building out my set a little bit and this is a really really raw form but I got kind of carried away late last night you can see the bags under my eyes oh this is cool look I can switch cameras you can see the bags under my eyes from being up so late at night um, 
working on the studio, I just get really inspired in the middle of the night, can't sleep, so I get up and start organizing. The family loves that they can't sleep when I can't sleep kind of thing. Um, so at any rate, uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm really excited to show you around the studio and make sure that you can all get a quick picture. So let's do that quickly. I'm dying to turn on a little bit larger uh, monitor so maybe I can see all of us better um, and I can follow your comments better and that way maybe if I can answer some questions when we get into the actual educational side. So yes, Making It Fun, uh, sponsored by Michael Miller Fabrics. Uh, that's the name of our blog out there um, and now the name of our YouTube channel also. Um, so with this, what we want to do is do a lot of fun live stream videos, but I always want it to be educational. Hey, if you're going to invest your time to watch me do something, um, I want you to hopefully be able to learn something. And then I also want to be able to use these recorded lives or edit up these live videos or do something with these so that I can make some really nice tutorials that will also be on the YouTube channel. And so I'm pumped up as can be about that. Um, and oh, there's the extra volume. And let me see, how do I get to see the comments, guys? Does anyone know? <laughs> well, I can see them here, and I've got plenty of battery, so I'm just going to move this over here. Teach the, that's the quilt behind you. Yes, I would love to. Um, here's the problem, the quilt behind me, I, I was supposed to know this this morning. I, I stole this when I was in Manhattan last week. I stole the quilt behind me. Doop. And now you should be able to see the quilt behind me from Michael Miller Fabrics while I was out there in Manhattan. And I am so sorry, I don't even know the designer's name. She's made two of them. I think we just asked her to make another one for our booth. They're awesome. Yes, I love them. They're incredible. Um, so I owe you uh, my to-do list. Somebody remind me is I need to get you the designer's name and I, there's probably a, a wonderful pattern for this. Um, it is, and let's talk about this briefly, it is all featuring Michael Miller Basics. And basics, what are Michael Miller Basics? Not just our cotton couture solids, but fantastic things like our hash dots. Let's move this real quick. Right, let's get, I'm, I'm working to do better presentations. Let's do a better presentation. So I'm gonna drop this down. I'm going overhead, I'm zooming in. I'm moving it till it looks awesome. This is called, oh look at me, I am rad. Doop, autofocus. This is the hash dot. Hash dot is a basic, right? Um, you should be able to find these in all your local quilt shops. Uh, we want you to go out there. We want you to support the local quilt shops. Um, and so this is a basics program. So we have a bunch of different colors. Dumb dot, another super fun dot. And um, of course, I would be more than happy to open those bundles up except for they're so beautiful. Like why on earth would I take this apart um, when I could order it by the yard? So anyways, I'm keeping this to myself and I'm going to make a beautiful shelf over here. Let me go back to that camera there. I'm making us a beautiful shelf for inventory and stock and please welcome to the set. Um, if he's, I'm gonna probably have to go wide angle. Wide, whoops, that's narrow. Why? There he is. Everybody, the stuffed Jerry Garcia doll. Um, we just love this guy. I'm a huge deadhead. I love the Grateful Dead. And Jerry has been with me in my video making for the long process. And he is often goofing around doing something fun. So Jerry's back on the set with us. And we're having a blast <laughs> with that. He is not a stuffed miner. Everybody wants to know who was the stuffed miner on Manson. No, 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 no. He is a Jerry Garcia doll from the Grateful Dead. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick comments check-in here. Why don't you enjoy a little bit more uh, beautiful fabric from the overhead camera for a second. Um, I can kind of scroll up. Please let me know, I'm also recording dual audios. Uh, so if I'm having bad audio, I'm wearing a microphone, all that kind of stuff. If anybody could let me know um, what the audio sounds like on your end. I'm trying to get dual channel um, because last time I just had it in one ear and I like to wear those headphones and stuff. And so any race, I wanted to make sure you have it in both ears now. So I'm trying to bring that in that way. Now we need to do the studio tour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little camera now, make sure it's activated, but I'm going to switch down here. Oh, 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 please take your Dramamine. Please take your Dramamine because it's going to get shaky. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. This is rad. So I just uh, yanked that giant monitor over there from behind my beautiful little Air Mac um, because my cable wasn't long enough to go up there. 
The iPad I'm using as the main cam. This DSLR that I just got, I'm just learning how to use, which is super fun. I'm using that as my uh, cam that you haven't even seen. That's just for recorded video right now. Um, this blank wall, this, let's talk about this blank wall right here because this is the next few days projects. That's where the guitars were. If you have my guitar quilt pattern out there, that's where those guitars were hanging when they were photographed. You've seen them in a few of the other videos. I realize I need to breathe. Let's slow down, Rob. So this wall, I'm going to divide it in half and it's going to be design wall up there. And then I'm going to have pegboard down here so you won't have to look at my messy tools. But you can see over here, I love my tool rack. And so um, what's going on over here? I'm gonna be having pegboard down there. I'll probably leave that pegboard. I've got a kind of little something special happening from about this corner all the way through here. I've got some uh, ideas I'm working on. So right now what that means is I'm simply shoving the junk over there and I am um, building up this side. Oh yeah, I was gonna bring you all the way around. Sorry, I'm so excited to have you joining me today. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's crowded. Look, I mean, oh, this is fun. This is a bicycle stand for working on your mountain bike that I'm also using to hold a broom handle, which actually has a high dollar tripod head on it. So you can do just about anything uh, with this stuff. I'm looking at rebuilding the table because the table's a little large, but boy, this table's the perfect size for so many things. This ironing board is what we're gonna talk about here in a few seconds. It is a piece of plywood covered in batting and fabric and stapled. And I've got a trick that I've just figured out to make this not such a problem with these staples because I probably am gonna resurface this table. I wanna have um, a nice surface on this table and then that way I can have just a few small cutting mats. You can see I've hidden the de design over there. Uh, closet over there is full of fabric. We'll talk about that another day. And um, so anyways, this is what I'm looking at. Let's get back on the set and let's have some serious fun making this ironing board situation here. I just gotta lock my camera back in. Hold on, drama meantime, let's go overhead. Uh-oh, touch the wrong button. Now you're overhead, that will help you with the drama mean issues. And now I can switch things around a little bit. Awesome. Great. <laughs> this is great. Somebody says, I hope I'll be a YouTuber one day. I don't know the difference of what a YouTuber is or not. Um, I guess I thought I was a YouTuber. Um, but my daughter um, follows real YouTubers. Oops, switching the cams around again. My daughter follows also what she refers to as real YouTubers. So, um, yes. What I really want to be is an educator and an inspiration for all of us so that we can find great ways to use arts and crafts in both our creative process, but also our healing process. Because this guy right here is going through both things in my life in my 40s, and I am a wreck sometimes, and I am on top of the world sometimes, and I use fiber arts and drawing and music to keep me as level as I kind of am. I don't know. At any rate, let's talk about this ironing board situation. I'm going back to the main cam so you can see what's happening out here. Now, what I truly believe in is that having both black fabric and white fabric for auditioning when I'm choosing my colors is crucial. So I've made both of my ironing boards. I have two of these things, two and a half, or excuse me, two foot by four foot, and they're made out of half inch ply. You could go a little larger if you wanted to, but the half inch has been fine for me. Um, and I'm gonna cover the today's in white, but I covered yesterday's in black to make sure this worked out really cool. Now, because I was stressing out over the cameras, I never took off the other layer. You don't have to take off your other layer, but I did on the first one because I want it to lay flat. One of the things that's kind of fun for me, but has also happened in my world, is everything I do textile related is both uh, arts, crafts, but also career and all that related. So. I want my boards to lay flat so they don't wobble around on the camera and make a bunch of effort for editing and that kind of stuff down the road. So you don't have to take fabric off once you recoat these and recoat these because you can see I've done this over and over again. So every couple layers, I actually strip them back down. I'm going to make sure I have all of these staples back out when I'm done by running my hand along there. And then right there, I've got my handy pocket tool. Okay, listen, 
This is called the Skeletool from Leatherman. It is the coolest multi-tool I have ever had. I had another gentleman come in trying to work on a sewing machine with one of these ones. And I absolutely love it. So if you're ever looking for a good gift for that person in your life that loves tools and multi-tools, it doesn't hardly weigh anything. And I absolutely love this thing. And the funny thing is, is I have assembled five or six different Michael Miller Houston quilt show booths with this tool itself. Uh, that's not exactly true. I lost uh, the black one originally, so I have the green now, so it's easier to find when I lay it down outside. Okay, how's this going, everybody? Let's check in on some comments. Oh, Sharon Wilson's got a wonderful quilt idea. I've been getting emails from wonderful quilt ideas. Oh, let's do this. This is really fun. I have a new email, and it is rob at michaelmillerfabrics.com and I have a little tile, boop, that I put up earlier this morning. So there is the spelling, make sure it's plural for fabrics, rob at michaelmillerfabrics.com. Send me those fantastic quilt ideas that you have. And, because um, I did, I got a phone call, uh, thank you Sharon, and I got an email also, I plan to email you this afternoon, I promise, I hope you're watching. Sorry, I forget which camera it's going. Um, I love quilt ideas and I love to see what you're all thinking about. Let me know and hey, send me photos of what you're doing with our basics and we'll put them up on our uh, website and you can follow them along. This is on YouTube today. My intention is to make all of this happen also on Facebook Live. Uh, again, I'm a quilter, not a tech yet, but I'm learning fast. Okay, let's turn this off. You don't need to look at that anymore. And um, let's go back over here, back to main cam. And we're working now on covering up this awesome ironing board. You can tell it absolutely needed it. It is filthy. It has been burned, beat, abused. There's staples in this. So eventually I'll take them out, wash this, and give it to the dog bed stuffing folks that use their fabric pieces for dog bed stuffing. Maybe that's another video for another day. I hope you're keeping track. I think we've already rattled off three or four new videos. Now, the board, as I said, is 48 inches long. So earlier I took my fabric and I laid it out so that I have about, oh, say six to eight inches longer all the way down. Now what I wanna do is I also need to figure out how wide to make this. So I've already folded it the opposite direction. And here again, you can see I'm gonna use this much overlap here so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use this much overlap. And almost using my ruler more to protect my hands than anything. Oh, let's go to the overhead. Can you see that in the overhead? Yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna cut that like that. Now, yesterday I saved my black scraps and I put fusible web on the back of them so that I could cut them into strips, so that I could make a covering, iron it down over the staples so that my back of my boards never scratch my tables. Ask me why that is important. You're supposed to be asking me on the phone why that is important. I've scratched a beautiful table by laying one of my ironing boards accidentally, it had a loose staple on the back. So I wanna cover all my staples so I never scratch tables with them. And that's my new trick to doing that. So here we have now prepared the fabric I have one of everyone's favorite sewing tools, the Manly Staple Gun, of course. And I'm gonna to try to slide this a bit out of my way. I hope I don't have any major wipeouts. Maybe I should move this down here. We'll come back to that in a minute. Actually, that's not true. I need to come back to that right now. Let's turn it back on, because I wanna heat it up. I'm gonna iron the creases out of this piece of fabric before I even start stapling it. Uh, wrapping it and stapling it around the back of this. Let's just do our best work. I mean, we should always try to do our best work, right? Even if we're just goofing off, it's fun. And then that way we learn as we go along. So while the iron's heating up, I'm gonna do a quick comment check-in. Oh, it looks like Sharon is following along. I love it. Okay, so... Turn up the sound. Okay, I can try that. Um, I actually have a little box I've built down here with audio knobs, so I, I'm gonna turn up the sound a little bit there and a little bit there. Um, it's slowly coming up, so careful if you're listening with big headphones on or something like that and your volume was already hot. 
So at any rate, um, fantastic. No scratching tables. Hello from Boise, Idaho. Um, there is fabric and batting both. Um, so let's go through the supplies again real quick. We're on the main cam, so that's perfect. I'm gonna use a piece of fabric and I needed about a yard and a half because my board is 48 and the normal 44 would not be long enough. So 54 a yard and a half is plenty long, but I do have lots left overs for the backing if I need. On the board is a good piece of um, poly batting. Um, and you know what, I say poly batting, but I really don't know that because I didn't make this. I love my hobs. I use an 80-20 batting and I think I would probably just use my scraps, but maybe make two nice layers of this if I was starting fresh. Um, I've done that as well. So I guess as long as you know your batting's going to work for you and it's not a fusible batting, that's one of the things I know I need to say right now. They make battings that are fusibles and you probably don't want that because over time the glues can just get weird. Um, at any rate, and then I have the piece of plywood. It was half inch plywood. Um, and therefore in my staple gun, I have like the little 3 8 staples um, or quarter inch staples so they won't come all the way up through the lumber. All right. Hey, Steve, glad you found me as well, my man. All right. I hope that's me. I just, I read so fast. I probably make all kinds of blunders. This is not a PC <laughs> sewing, sewing space. You know, I will uh, offend everybody eventually. I hope not to, but I just speak. And so it comes out. So anyways, I hope uh, Steve uh, watching is a male's name. You just never know anymore. I was Robbie growing up, and if you spelled it with an I-E, it was uh, more the uh, effeminate version, so I was the Y guy, so that everybody knew. But then, of course, that was still not bravo enough for this guy, so then I became Rob, you know, which is okay. Robert is when I'm in trouble, of course, the spanking name as referred to. I'm just running my iron over this right now, just to take some of these creases out. I'm going to stretch them out, really, and um, in a second here. You know what, this is driving me crazy down here because I'm not really able to follow the stream. So let's get rid of that. And then I can put this over here and maybe I can see your questions a little bit better. Oh, wonderful. Batting for hot pads, that's a great idea. Great question and thank you for the questions and thank you for participating. Um, the Thinsel Bright is what it's referred to. Now, the only disadvantage of using something like Thinsel Bright is it's gonna be a little more pricey and therefore, um, you know, I'm using scraps usually from some of my small wall quilts where I've pulled off because I always buy a big uh, queen or king size batting whenever possible and then I just cut it into smaller pieces. Okay. We gotta get the staple gun running or you guys will be here all night. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kind of wrestle with this personally so that it's a little bit easier for us to all see. What we really wanna do is get one really good startup edge and everything else is gonna go like gravy from there. Okay, let's go to the overhead camera for a few minutes so you can really watch what I'm doing here. Now, I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm gonna fold it under one time because when stapling, I've always been taught if one fold or one fabric layer is good, two fabric layers is better. I'm going to put a ton of pressure down because I want to set that staple in deep, but I'm not going to put staples every three inches, right? I don't need to do that, especially for the startup. So I'm going to come down a good maybe foot, maybe 14 inches or so. And I want to put, oh, let's go 12 inches. I'm going to put another staple. Oh, by the way, those of you who turn the microphones up, Maybe I better turn the audio down. I can see it's clipping like crazy with that. Uh, sorry. Now I'm gonna come down here a little ways. Plug your ears. Okay, so I've kind of got this set. I wanna go one more all the way down to the edge. Let me see, yes, you can see where my hand is. Beautiful. I'm gonna fold this over like a package in a minute. In that corner, same down here. But this is where the, the true thing happens. So let's go ahead and go back to big cam. I'm gonna zoom out. Sorry, don't have my skills yet, perfect. Okay. Reading some comments at the same moment. Okay, now you can see, I'm gonna actually take this and I'm grabbing it by the fabric and I'm spinning it about. And that way I actually have the fabric, well, almost had the fabric with me as I came under. I'm going to double check to make sure I don't have any folds or creases or anything weird going on down here. And just like all 
those other upholstery tricks, right? I'm just going to kind of use the weight of the board against the pull of the fabric. And now, let's just take a minute. Like I said, let's, we always should be putting our best feet forward. And this is studio not quite finished. So I'm going to move this. Eventually, I'll have a good spot for that. I'm going to move this. Eventually, I'll also have a good spot for that. <laughs> but now everything's flat. Now I can get the job done proper. So I'm holding it up. I'm kind of pulling to the weight of the board. And then I'm going to come right back to that middle, basically across from where that other staple was. I want to get my double fold. Try to keep it even so it's kind of parallel running this way. And now I'm going to shoot one here. Let's adjust the camera so you can see a little bit better. Okay, a little audio check again. I, every time I look at something, I need to make some silly adjustment. Sorry about that, kids. All right. How are you all doing out there? Oh, it just needs a symbol. I love it. <laughs> hey, these are great comments. You guys are, you guys are awesome. Um, okay, now let's just keep finishing this up. We'll bring you back in close overhead when I get to the corner. You can see that that extra, gosh, four to six inches I use on the other side or the opposite side is actually just barely enough, right? You want to be able to have enough to work with it that you're not fighting it the whole time. Do all the sides before you try to start to play with your corners because I want to flip it over in a second and check to make sure that it's as ripple free as possible. Okay, now there's some wonderful live trivia today. I want you to start keeping track of all of the songs that are Grateful Dead titles that I throw out. Okay, so there's one. I just threw out one if you're paying attention and you're also a Grateful Dead fan. That'll be, that'll be clever. Okay, so here you're all doing your thing and um, let's go ahead now. We're gonna check, flipping it over. I'm going to smooth these out, no creases that bother me, flipping it back over. And again, I'm going to rotate to use the, ro the board itself. Now, the weight of the board itself. Let me get this centered up so we can bring you into the top cam a little bit better. Now I am going to do all of this side at once. So I'm kind of playing with this fold down here. I'm making sure that the raw edge is turned under, not because I'm worried about the threads, but again, I want that for the fold. So I'm going to do it up here again as well. Then when I bring it here, I do want to start back in the center. Hopefully you could kind of see how I walked my fingers along there. So I've got a shot there. I've got a shot here. Another one coming. Hold your ears. Okay, now let's get into this corner. And because I have the capabilities. Let me just take a second and put it where you can really see what's going on. Now with this, I'm just going to tidy up this, like I said, just like a package. Sorry. Fold your top under first. Side under first. Did I say top? I don't know if you're paying attention or not. It was so much easier yesterday when you weren't watching. <laughs> so I'm just kind of wadding that 45 down in there into the corner, right? I'll show you the black ones. I'm going to show you those black ones. The black ones are beautiful on the back. I don't know what just happened there. I think I actually got my staples a little close or I'm too worried about the dumb camera angles. But let's go back to this because I got my finger there. How silly is that? Staple, staple. Now I want to point out that my staples are primarily in a nice line. That's going to make life easier when it comes time to um, trim it out with that iron-on fabric. Okay, so I'm going to come down here along the road, down the side, 45. Sorry, the top has to be folded up first. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, top was folded up yesterday, but so does the side now come down. So I basically have a fold over a fold. One's going to win the battle, let whatever happen. Then you're going to tuck in your side for your 45. I'm still doing it wrong. <laughs> 
Wah! This is, this is where the, the YouTubers would write fail across the screen because I get a little stressed out, a little nervous, and I start doing silly things. So either way, this is the back side of the ironing board. But I wanted to teach you how I did my cool corners, and now I'm struggling with it. Um, great, and I'm watching you on the 30-second delay replay, which makes it even worse. So let's get back to business. Let's see if we can just make this fit in there. I think I was trying to tell you to go down your side fold first so that you could fold it in like a package and then bring it up. But what happened yesterday is I think that I had a much longer side. This was much wider. And so you can see one of these pieces is much wider than the other and that was probably causing the problem. Who knows? Okay. So we're just gonna put that like that. Folding it back under, bringing it here. And then I'm just gonna make a wad and tuck and staple and hammer this thing down. That has gotta be the grossest fold ever. What happened here? All right, let's bring up our example. I think that's what happened. This is silly. And I do apologize, I have no idea whose print that was on the back. Oh, and now I've done such, look at this. I've done such a good job trimming it out, you can't even see the fold or the lines. And this is what we're gonna do here in a second. Um, so I'm just gonna wrestle with these corners because I really don't, um, at this moment, want to spend much more time worrying about it and nor do we need to because it's just the back of an ironing board. Okay, so staple and staple. <laughs> oh good, none of you logged out though. That's great, you're staying to see the fail, the fail in process. I love you all, you're the best. Okay, that's what I did yesterday. Sorry, it comes so natural when I do it without thinking about it. Okay, this is what I'm doing wrong. Here we go, sides come down. Now we go into Christmas package mode, okay? Sides come down, and I'm just letting them stay that way before I fold it up. Now that it's folded up, I'm gonna then fold this top edge down like this. Sorry, out of the camera. What I did, let me just start over. Once these came up Christmas package style and pretty, I'm gonna pull a little tension now because I know it's gonna work from the opposite side. Now I've brought these up. Now I'm just gonna fold underneath, use my thumb to secure, let's shoot there, here, to the corner, there, and to the corner. Ha! Huh. May I say, thank you, good Lord, for bailing me out there because it's funny, and this is one of the reasons I believe in other art and or hiking. When my brain gets stuck on the problem in the, in the project, whatever it is I'm building, when my brain gets stuck, the moment I step away, the solution is often delivered. So it's really cool. So anyways, that's what I wanna show you real quick. Now, back to trimming these out. Let's bring the iron back up here. I'm gonna get my iron hot, but dry. And what is on the back of my black fabric is heat and bond feather light, because it's what I live off of. I love the stuff and it's always around. However, the perfect supply for this job would have been the heat and bond ultra hold because, and let me point this out, ultra hold is no sew. You are not gonna be using it when you're sewing through it. So it's perfect for iron and iron only, and it's gonna bond because the job in this now is going to be to go ahead and trim out over the top of these staples. Now I'm using the black because it was left over from yesterday, and I wanna save the white for another project. So these are two inch wide strips, and I fused first. I'll be right back. One of my cameras just shut off. didn't take long, fused first, and then um, trimmed it so that the fabric, or the, excuse me, the fusible web goes all the way to the edge here. And then now, because I don't have my big scissors handy, I'm just gonna take and trim this with a nice clean edge, rotary cutter style there. And what we're gonna do, I forgot, this was the iron edge I didn't press. I'm just gonna get that hot for a second. 
you really want to make sure that the bond between the fusible web and the fabric is good and also cool for a project like this because I'm not going to have the benefit of stitching it down to hold it in place forever and so that glue also acts as a bit of a fray check. Let's go into the overhead so you can see push that out hopefully it won't fall off. Now as I'm peeling this off you can see there's a shine on the back of the fabric and that shine on the back of the fabric right there is the glue from the heat and bond that's coming right off. And yesterday when I did these, I found that trimming out my short edge, let's go a little wider for you. Oh, I always say that and then I get the directions wrong. I found that trimming out my short edges first worked pretty nice because this was that scrap of the black fabric, which was uh, about 54. So it's long enough to go down the 45s, no problem there. Now I'm in the overhead camera for you still, and I am applying this with a dry iron, no heat. Excuse me, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cold iron. It's, it's a cold iron, don't do that. No, I said a, a, a dry iron with no heat. I meant a dry iron with no steam in it. A lot of times I use a steam in my iron to produce extra heat when I'm doing my patchwork because I like a crisp seam. Gives us nice straight pressing and all of that. Fantastic. Okay, now with this, I'm going to rotate. I'm going to do the small end next, short end next on this side here. And I should have told you that of the strips, now I'm going to use the other half of the strip on this side. It fits perfect. So that side's been pre bonded. So I just need to cut it to fit and it's going to fit with just the selvage taken off with my rotor. Hey, everybody see what I got here? Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm not an endorsement marketer anymore. You'll notice that if you want to buy stuff, you have to go to robappel.com. And thank you, everybody that has subscribed this week to Making It Fun um, and has gone to my website. You've kept me very busy going back and forth to the post office. Um, but no, that's just a fun gift. That's the new Olfa Ruby. Um, 40th anniversary rotary cutter and it is as awesome feeling in your hand as it is looking. I just, I love special stuff like that. Okay, let's drop this down here, overhead for you to see again. Where am I at? There it is. Okay. And when you're bonding this stuff, I stall just for a minute, get my iron nice and hot again. And again, the reason I'm putting this black fabric and I'm ironing it down is to cover over the staple heads. And I should have mentioned, you should have pounded down with a hammer any of the staple heads that needed done before we trim these out. So we've kind of gone back here through with this and a hammer and knocked those down just right. One of the other fun things I've been doing this week is I've been trying to sew here on my set so that I get used to what it all feels like while trying to pre-record because I'm producing and editing and um, filming all of this on the fly myself. And so it's been really fun this week to be over here sewing and playing and stuff. And I'm starting to get the feel, the layout. So I'm hoping you're all liking, um, I'm hoping you're all liking the layout. Okay, I better do a quick comments check. Oh, the iron. Um, that iron, again, I am not an endorsement marketer, but that was given to me by Panasonic of several two and a half, three years ago, something like that, when I first started doing the man sewing uh, brand. And um, it's been great, it's the same one, I've used it, so that's why I'm telling you how long I've had it. Because when I turn my iron on, even though it does have auto shut off, and I hate auto shut off, but when I turn my iron on, it is on for sometimes 10 and 12 hours at a time. I have to keep turning this one back on. Um, Sherman, Sherman, was actually used, um, like the tank, yeah, Sherman, was used to put the heat and bond on the back of the big chunk of fabric. And the reason is, and you probably know this, when you're ironing, the heat's gonna transfer out of the bottom of your iron plate and it's gonna go into your fabric. Therefore, this isn't as hot as when you started. So with a big piece of heat and bond, you really want it to bond all the way through your fabric or when you peel off the paper, the glue doesn't always stick to the fabric. So I use Sherman almost always when fusing the first layer. 
I like the Panasonic because it's completely cordless and it's got these nice little tips for when I'm anchoring down the second layer. It doesn't always get hot enough to anchor down four layers of fuse at once. So at any rate, that sometimes can be a problem, but it's not always a problem. Okay. So let's get this iron down here real quick and I'm going to wrap this up today. I can see one of my camera's batteries is starting to run pretty low, which is okay. Some of them are plugged in. I'm getting it figured out. I'm getting it figured out. I will go back and I will look at these comments and I will try to add information as necessary uh, here on YouTube. I don't know if I'll ever be able to post this to Facebook as the original plan was. If you're new to live videos, what's easiest for us presenters is to go ahead and interact with you while we're here. But then it's really hard sometimes with all of the comments to go back and find too many comments. So that's why I wanted you to have my email address. Watch this. Bonk. The, oh, I said bonk, there it is. The email address, rob at michaelmillerfabrics.com. In case I miss something that is really important to get answered to you, I wanna make sure I can answer that for you. So shoot me an email and um, it's a new server. So I'm also making sure that I have that tested and working very, very well. So I would love to interact with you all that way. Last piece here we're doing, let's get rid of that overlay so you can see what's going on better. And maybe back to the overhead for the final slide down. So I'm just trimming off with my rotary cutter, just the edge, just to square it up. Make sure it fits this way. I'll trim the other edge. And yes, being a designer, I think I'm pretty slick. Uh, it was Levi who put, the guy who made me the ironing boards originally, who put the cool checkerboard fabric on the back. And so I can only take credit for getting lucky at the moment. I just now realizing the black and white fabric coming together is pretty awesome for the checkerboard, don't you think? Okay. So I'm just, again, covering the staples. No one will see it because they won't ever flip the board over to say, Hey, why did my table get scratched up? Are there staples exposed back there? They'll never need to look because we already took the care for this. And another quick idea, you could always use like, um, like a fabric tack style glue and ribbon that's pre-made. That's another great idea for something like this. But like I said, yesterday when I made the black one right over there, I had this fabric left over enough to do the back of the black and now the back of this awesome white one. And why is that so important? Well, like even what I was saying, oh, are we still on overhead? Where are we at? We're on main. Okay. Why is that so important is look at the colors in the room. Look at what happens when you activate fabric color by introducing uh, all the colors or none of the colors, you, you know, if you like that theory. So when I was making these wonderful color strata quilts, I actually had just covered my ironing board with this white fabric. As I pointed out, there's another fun video. I tried to do a little trunk show with these. And this is exactly what happened. Now I went to the black for this one because I wanted the impact and I often lean towards the black. It's kind of my go-to for punch. So I love it. But when I audition, I now want to be able to lay both my fabrics on here and see what happens as I play, right? So like I can take something like this take something like this, I can lay it in here and I can really enjoy the reaction of this bundle of fabric against either the dark or the light and how that's going to react. Kathy Miller of Michael Miller Fabrics obviously taught us all that when she started putting white carpet on all of the booths and the walls. We used white as a major, major accent to expose and ignite the color and the excitement because this is why we do this. We love working with color. We love working with fabric. So we might as well make it as awesome and make it as fun as possible. So before I sign off today, I have no idea how long it's been. Let's do a quick check in over here and uh, make sure that I'm following along with the comments. Let's see if there's any major questions I should answer. Fantastic. Thank you for the support. I was reading a comment about, I thought I was growling and I'm like, oh no, mic problems. No, growing through my struggles. Yes. 
and the Lord is strengthening me each and every day. And I'll just point out, because I do want to talk a little bit about emotions here, making it fun. Fun is an emotion. Um, stress is an emotion. And uh, for me, what I did is I just got too busy the last couple weeks. I got too focused in here and I forgot to take the time in the morning to just spend a little time breathing and stretching. And I like to spend some time in my Bible. That's just my personal thing. Um, and so I started spending too much time on technology. And so at any rate, I am learning to go back to my morning routine, which is to unplug for a bit, get my exercise. And then when I get back to my creative process, and uh, this morning, and I'm so sorry, I shouldn't tell you this. I had a prop. I'll just tell you this much. I had a prop I wanted to have available. And I saw that prop in my head as I was downward dog stretching. And I'm like, okay, I got to get this. So I ran around like a madman for a while trying to find that prop. But it was that inspiration. Boom, it hit me. And I got excited about doing this project today and uh, doing the live videos. So as I'm signing off, I want to remind you, making it fun on YouTube where you're watching it live right now is the brand new channel for tutorials for live content from Michael Miller Fabrics and me, Rob Appel. And I'm gonna bring you sewing stuff, but also whatever I find while I'm out running around. We're gonna use Instagram through the Michael Miller Fabrics. Watch this. I've got this little header I can bring up, making it fun. We're gonna use the Instagram through Michael Miller Fabrics. We're gonna use the Facebook page through Michael Miller Fabrics to try to communicate with you. I think I'm gonna to try to do most of my lives for a while on Facebook and then bring them to YouTube recorded because that's where my technology is at about now. But we had major issues this morning on Facebook, so we bounced to YouTube. So the best thing I can say is please subscribe and follow us in all locations so you don't miss a moment of the making it fun. With that, I will sign off. I love you all. We will see you very soon. Adios, amigos.